Miss Universe, 1987 by Jack T. Chit. Around 520 BC, the king of the Medes and Persians threw a super party that lasted over six months. King Ahasuerus invited everyone important from all 120 of his provinces from India to Ethiopia. The king showed off all the riches of his glorious kingdom, bringing forth Queen Vashti. Vashti. Yes, your majesty. When he was drunk, he decided to show off his beautiful queen, but Vashti wouldn't come. She refuses me? The king lost face before his people. The story spread like lightning. Did you hear? Yes, queen. Vashti showed him. Good for her. Everywhere wives began revolting. The king called an emergency meeting. All the men agreed Queen Vashti had to go. What does it say? A law was published requiring all wives to honor their husbands. A beauty contest was suggested. Hmm, yes, I like that to find the world's most beautiful virgin for the king. Every mother dreamed of her daughter being the new queen. I can see you wearing the crown. But mama, what? I'm not a virgin. You are not? Whack. God was setting the stage to block one of Satan's most murderous attacks upon the children of Israel. Over 100 years earlier, Jerusalem had been attacked. Most of the population was taken to Babylon as slaves. Eventually, Babylon fell to the Medes and the Persians. At this time, many Jewish people lived in exile under Ahasuerus. Mordecai, a Jew, lived in the palace. He had a beautiful foster daughter named Esther. You must never tell anyone you are a Jew. Yes, Mordecai. Esther was taken with the other virgins to prepare to meet the king. Esther won the hearts of those she worked with. When 12 months of purification ended, she was sent to see the king. The king loved Esther above all the women, so he made her queen instead of Ashti. The king threw another party. He called it Esther's feast. He didn't know that Esther was a Jewess. One day, Mordecai overheard a plot to assassinate King Ahasuerus. He got word to Esther, and those involved were hanged. But no one thanked Mordecai for saving the king's life. About this time, the king promoted Haman, a dangerous Jew hater. The king commanded everyone to bow to Haman. Haman was like a prime minister. Everyone bowed to him. Everyone that is except Mordecai. Who is that man? Mordecai was warned not to show disrespect to Haman, but he would not listen. Haman was filled with wrath. Esther 3.5 Haman was told that Mordecai was a Jew. There's another one. I hate them all. So Haman sought to destroy all the Jews. See Esther 3.6. They cast lots to pick the exact day for the terrible slaughter. Now Haman had to sell his plan to the king. Haman told the king of some strange people in the kingdom who ignored his laws. If it pleased the king, let it be written that these people be destroyed. The king didn't even ask which people Haman wanted to exterminate. The king gave his signature ring to Haman. Any writing bearing the ring's mark became law. Haman immediately set the date for the slaughter of the Jews. Hmm, the 13th of the month, Adar. Why kill the Jews? It's the law. We must be good citizens and take part. Anyone who killed a Jew could keep his property. The Jews were terrified. Mordecai sent Esther a message. Go before the king to save your people. But I will die unless he holds out his scepter to me. 
Mordecai believes you were raised up for such a time as this. She asked that all the Jews pray and fast three days for her. Three days later, she went before the king. He extended, he extended his scepter. What is your request? She invited the king and Haman to a banquet. Haman was delighted. Mordecai still refused to bow, so Haman built a 75-foot gallows. He planned to ask the king's permission to hang Mordecai. That night, the king couldn't sleep, so he read the book of records. Was Mordecai rewarded for saving my life? No, your majesty. He must be rewarded. Just then, Haman arrived to see about hanging Mordecai. Haman, how can I reward a man I want to honor? He must mean to me. He must mean me. Dress him in the king's robes and a royal crown, and lead him through the streets on the king's horse. Wonderful. Go do that for Mordecai. Haman couldn't believe his ears. Totally humiliated, Haman paraded his arch enemy through the city as a champion. This is the man the king delighteth to honor. Hooray for Mordecai! Haman was so upset he forgot about Esther's banquet. The king's servants had to go get him. At the banquet, the king asked Esther what her petition was and promised it would be granted. She asked that the lives of her and her people be spared. Who would dare slay the queen? This wicked Haman. Gasp! The queen? A Jew? Oh no! The king went outside to cool off. Haman fell across Esther's bed and begged for his life. Just then the king returned. Gasp! Will he rape the queen right in front of me? The king ordered Haman to be hanged on his own gallows. Then he made a new law giving the Jews authority to kill anyone who threatened them. The Jews rejoiced and held a feast. God bless Queen Esther. Today Jews of the world celebrate the Feast of Purim as a memorial to the story. For centuries the Jews have looked for their promised Messiah to save them. Who is the Messiah? The prophet Isaiah described him, For unto us a child is born, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Isaiah 9.6 Isaiah said to look for this sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Isaiah 7.14 Emmanuel means God with us. The Messiah had to suffer, Isaiah 53, 5. Jesus shed his precious blood to wash away our sins. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, Jesus, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life, John 3, 16. Jesus arose from the dead and now sits at the right hand of God, 1 Peter 3, 22. Jesus created the universe and will judge all things at his second coming, see John 5, 22. Like Haman, another enemy of the Jews called the Beast will come to power. His goal will be to rule the world and destroy Israel. Revelation 13, 14. When the Russian and Arab armies attack, Christ will destroy them on the mountains of Israel. Ezekiel 39, 4. When it looks hopeless, the heavens will open and Jesus Christ will return as Israel's Messiah. See Revelation 19, 11 through 16. Jesus will destroy Satan's armies at Armageddon. The Lord Jesus will rule the governments of the world from Jerusalem. Satan will be cast into the lake of fire. Jesus said, In my Father's house are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you. John 14, 2. Who will you trust? Jesus Christ or Satan? The choice is yours. The Bible says there's only one way to heaven. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. John 14, 6. Nobody else can save you. Trust Jesus today.